It is? Yeah. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our DIC Lunch and Learn. DIC Lunch and Learn is a platform where we share with employees of our businesses in Dominica improve their moral, but also their expertise make our workplace a much better place in Dominica. Today we have Nabina George of Todas, an entrepreneur in Dominica, who will share with us tips and more information on how we can ensure that our customer service balances personally with professionalism. So as our theme says, yeah. customer service in professionalism with personality. And right. Nabina, welcome to our lunch and learn this afternoon. Please raise me a privilege to be here today. Um, as I was formally introduced, I am Nabina George, I'm the founder and managing director at Todas Exclusive. And I'm say that customer service is something that is very important to us at Todas. So I am an advocate for customer service, and it's one of our actually our main objective, efficient customer service. So being here today is a privilege. I'm just so excited to, to discuss and educate you know the employers as well as the employees as to proper customer service management and how what is expected of you at your. Place. So today we're going to discuss a bit about what is customer service, how we can. We have the best customer service in our case environment. Um, also, examples of good and what is not good. We also want to discuss a bit more about personality, personality and professionalism. Understanding what is professional in the workplace, like the code of conduct and different aspects of the business, which is important to understand how employees communicate. We'll end by also ensuring that we have tips of good customer service so that we all understand how take customer service to a next level in Dominica. Okay. Are you ready, Namina? I'm ready. Great. Great. <laughs> Great. So, Namina, <laughs> let's discuss what is customer service? Well, customer service is a provision of service um, to a customer before, during, and after transaction. Mm -hmm. To emphasize before, during, and after transaction, because sometimes people receive customer service as they have a customer one on one. I deal with you and you and that's it. But customer service is before. Before the customer actually purchase a good, the goods or services mm -hmm. during and even after, because um after will will promote longevity of your business in terms of customer relation, all of that. For sure, that is customer service. Okay. Sure. And being able to pro being able to ensure that there's longevity right. in our business based on how we portray ourselves. Yes, and that's why it's before, the after. Okay, great. So it, it's important that you take note of this. I hope have your even if you're eating right now you could have your pen and right. your paper even, if, even your phone to take some keynotes so that we can improve our service in the so Nabina can you give us some examples of, of good customers well one of the examples I will give you is um, one of the key examples of um, efficient customer service and the reason for something that I see on that every day when I step into a business um, an example would be a place where I'm looking item let's say I'm looking for a blender mm -hmm. the, the customer rep the customer service rep she's on her phone and she's texting and as soon as a customer comes in the workspace one of the things that you do is make sure that you eliminate every distraction and that distraction is whether you're in front of your computer writing or you're on your texting or speaking to your manager or your, whatever that is this distraction is eliminating the distraction and ensuring the customer that they are the one in your business. Mm -hmm. So for one, when the customer steps in, you formally introduce yourself because the customer wants to know who is it that they're going to be interfacing with through that transaction. So you say, I am Nabina George, I am Lisa mm -hmm. and how can I assist you today? The customer may say, um, it's okay, I'm just browsing. That does not give that does not indicate that you should go back phone or go back to your computer mm -hmm. or go back to whatever it's that you're doing and just leave the customer on the What you do is that you set aside, you give the customer some room, but you let the customer know that I am right there in case you need me. You can even voice that opinion. You can say, um, I am right there if you need me and if you need any information, I am right there. Keep your distance, but keep your eyes on the customer. Make it I am and when the customer is browsing sometimes you also have the customer board because the customer they want. Mm -hmm. Most 
put a business place sometimes not even knowing what they want. They want a blender, but they don't know how many speed blender, what speed that they want. They don't know mm-hmm. what brand that they're looking at. Okay. As a customer rep, you should be so versatile with what you're doing that you should know read the body language of the customer. Okay, um, she's looking at an oyster. Mm-hmm. Or she's looking at, so you, while you're at a distance observing, you can say, you can also educate the customer well. If you're looking at a, a blender to do shakes, or you're looking at a blender to just do juice, or you're looking at a commercial blender, mm-hmm. you educate the customer while you're at a distance. So you can let the customer know that um, I'm right there. And that is efficient customer service. Making mm-hmm. the customer know that you're there. Even if the customer needs to mm-hmm. browse. Okay, great. So that was a... Very important point. Um, we introduce ourselves, but we also let the customer know, even if they do not want to purchase or do not want to utilize our service at the time, right. that we're there and we can assist right. them should they, they need our assistance. Right. Great. Right. Any so, other examples that you have that we could share? For efficient customer service? Yes. Um, let's look at the telephone. Okay. Um, because that is also um, one of the ways of portraying good customer mm-hmm. service because I might not come into your establishment, but I, I might call. And when a customer calls, it's, al- it's always good to say where, when a customer calls, if I'm calling at Dawasco or I'm calling at Richards, it's always good to say, hi, good day, you're calling Dawasco or you're calling mm-hmm. Richards. Let the customer, <laughs> I, okay, I have called places before, Lizra, where I, I, I know I'm calling this place, but because of how you answer, I am, I am not even sure if I'm calling this place. Mm-hmm. And you answer, hello or hi. You're not, mm-hmm. I'm not calling my friends out. Yes. So you have to make sure that you answer with courtesy and you say, I'm hi, you're calling the last go. I am, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to, but you, it's, it's appropriate to say your name. Um, I am Miss Fabian, how may I assist you? And when a person speaks to you on the phone, it's always good to be clear as to what you're saying, clear your communication in okay. your speech between the customer mm-hmm. and yourself. So that is efficient customer service. Um, one of the one of the one of actually one of the things that we do that is um, that is not appropriate is that when a customer calls and we put them on hold, we don't even let them know that they're on hold. We just we just the person asks, um, can I go to can you put me on to extension twenty nine? And we mm-hmm. just we just go on hold, put the person on hold yeah. and the person is no you say can you please hold? Mm-hmm. I'm going to transfer your call. So that is that is one of communicating right. with our customers to let them know exactly what we're doing exactly. to serve them. Exactly. Great. Exactly. And I think um, customers do appreciate good customer service, yes. and they recognize what it is good customer yes. service. Yes. I think it's also unforgettable when you get excellent customer service. And as I always say, Lisa, um, happy happy employees. Mm-hmm. Plus happy customers mm-hmm. equate or equals to productivity being increased or okay. pro- your profit margin going mm-hmm. high. So at the end of the day, at a business, I mean, we all we are not we all in business to make a profit, mm-hmm. and it's not just about the. I mean, we, we look at the revenue, but the revenue stems from the foundation, and the foundation to me is customer service. Okay. Because that's going to make or break your business. Because if you don't have your customers, you can't have. You're not going to have. You're not going to make money. You're not going to have profit. So if, for example, um, all the, you are in business, but your customer service is lacking, people are not going to come to you because I want to come to a place to spend my money right the comfortable. Mm-hmm. And that is something that we have to take into consideration as employers and also as employees. Yes. You know, because it's, 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 not, it's, not about, it's not about you. It's about the customer. And I think even if someone may be friends with the owner of the business, right. but if there's terrible customer service, then customers have a choice where they spend the money. So they would go where of course. it's, it's of better course. for them. And I also say that people have people have it. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we always gravitate towards what we know. So mm-hmm. example, we... If your a brand is already developed, um, mm-hmm. you always gravitate towards that brand. Now, if you have a new business and you're just starting up and you are looking for people to come into your business place, people make they will see a new business and they will they will venture to see what well, what is this business about. But from the time I step into your business place and I realize that the customer service is very bad, mm-hmm. that in itself is very bad publicity for the for the manager. That's enough, right? Exactly. So in, 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 in the long run, the business mm-hmm. is gonna fail. So people have to understand that customer service management is very important. It's actually the key foundation 
of a business. Okay, thank Being you successful. for sharing that. So we saw customer service is key for business yes. moving forward. Yes. So just to recap in this first section, we spoke about what is customer service. We spoke about that it's important for sustaining a business even before, during, and after, right. and also for promoting the longevity of a business. We moved on to, to speak about examples of good customer service, right. where we spoke about being able to identify yourself when you're speaking of your the customers who come into your business place, and also letting your customer know that they're there, even if they do not want to patronize the business at the moment, or they are unaware as to if they'll make a purchase or not, then we still let them know that we're there to answer any question that they may have. And we must also be clear in our communication with the with the customers of right. that business. I must um, make mention, uh, I mentioned it to Nabina recently, about an experience I had where um, I was passing, but I was not going to patronize the business at the moment. Um, it was a restaurant. They were asking, do you want something to eat? Come in and eat, eat next, eat by us. And it's like, we just had something recently, so we do not want to eat right now. And it's like, okay, well, you don't want to come in now, but see tomorrow. Right. And it's not like because I'm not patronizing the business at the moment that they get vexed and they say goodbye right. or right. get angry at us. But letting the customer know that you still exist, you still care about them, and you can patronize you at a, at a subsequent moment. And that is so important, Israel. And I just, I just hope that persons can grasp that concept, that, I mean, how important mm -hmm. customer service is. Great. So I think we move on to another key part of our discussion, which is on the importance of displaying professionalism. That's an important, 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 because there's a very thin line between um, professionalism and mm -hmm. the, individual, in the, the individual personality. Okay. And professionalism actually is um, displayed by your competence and your skill as a professional. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'm not saying that you have to lose your identity um, in your business space because mm -hmm. sometimes you know people can can be can be unclear that oh because I'm professional I can't be myself I have to just be like a robot and just do mm -hmm. what's expected of me. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that. We have to understand that there's a code of conduct in every business place that mm -hmm. must be met. Um, sometimes the code of conduct is written and mm -hmm. sometimes it's not. But at the end of the day, we all have to understand what is, being, what is professionalism and how to draw that line. Okay. Now, let's look at your dress code, Lisa. Mm -hmm. For one, um, I'm going to go off a little bit because, you know, one of the hats that I wear is fashion and mm -hmm. dressing people. Okay. So that's always something that is dear to me. Mm -hmm. And I must say that we have to understand that when we come into a workplace, we have to be professional in our attire. Okay. Now, our accessories, not always our earrings or our necklaces mm -hmm. and so on. Our accessories, also our makeup. Mm -hmm. Our accessories, also our nails. Mm -hmm. And these are accessories because it enhance our attire. Okay. You know, we have to take into consideration that we are in a business place and we have to keep it at a level where people are not distracted or mm -hmm. easily distracted by what we look like okay. or by how we portray ourselves, right? Okay. So your nails should not be 60 feet long. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. But you want to say an exaggeration. Yeah. <laughs> it should not be that long yeah. and so brightly colored that... Um, you have all the different rainbow colors on your nails. Mm -hmm. Also, your makeup should not be so loud that mm -hmm. when I look at you, I have to be trying to understand why do you have, you know, have to be playing TikTok on your face. I'm just saying that mm -hmm. we have to be very discreet in that, you know? Okay. And also, we should not have clothes that are so tight mm -hmm. that we can't even attend to a customer properly in case an item falls it and pick it up mm -hmm. and all those different things. So we have to be very careful in into you know not 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 crossing that line or that mm -hmm. border in terms of our dress code. Um, I'm not saying that you have to lose the identity and you have to wear bags to come to work, but I'm mm -hmm. just saying that you have to be discreet. Yeah. You have to be professional. Your work ethics have to show in your attire mm -hmm. and all of that, right? Well, there's something that you mentioned which is very important in terms of our or accessories right. and I'm thinking there's some businesses that may not necessarily be a, a retail store or somewhere where right. customers go in to purchase something but it could be a business over the phone and right. I'm thinking that there are accessories that customers can even experience or I'm not saying they can see because they right. cannot see over right. the phone right. but they can still experience over the phone such as our smile right. 
they say oftentimes if you smile when you answer a phone, the person yeah. who's listening on the other end can definitely hear it in our voice. So I'm thinking that this is something we we need to mention. It's not that they're grinning at everything or right. turning it into a joke, but sometimes when we smile, even if we are feeling sad, we put on a smile and we answer the phone, and it, it really helps. It makes a difference. And all this come under the code of conduct because at, at the end of the day, the code of conduct has to do with your personality, it has to do with you and your mm -hmm. good ethics and how you display that good ethics mm -hmm. at the business place. And talking about that is, so, that is so important because I always say you don't allow the customer to know when you're upset. And that's something that we have to work on, you okay. know, as individuals. Sometimes we can be very emotional. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to know how to separate um, our emotions from our work and, and our emotions from our day-to-day -day activity. Yeah. And a customer comes in and you are emotionally drained from some, something that went on in your personal life. That's not the customer. I mean, that's, that has nothing to do with the customer. That's true. And I will feel very offended if I enter a workplace and you, you have an emotional baggage and you're going to put it on me or you, I'm going to feel like I did something wrong because of how you feel. And one thing that I always do when I enter a workplace is that I always look for a smile, as mm -hmm. you rightfully said. And I one time ago I went to a business place and when I entered the business place, um, this young lady, she was standing behind the counter and her face was very serious. And I felt a little bit uneasy because I did not know how to approach. But knowing that customer service is something that is so angry, I feel it's like I have to do something to help the situation. Mm -hmm. So I said, hi, how are you today? She said, I'm fine. And I'm like, okay, um, can you just smile? And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, Lydra, that we have to be so careful. I mean, she would have been having a bad day. And it's, it's okay to have a bad day. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that we can't have a bad day. Everybody go for their rough, their rough yeah, moments. Definitely. But what I'm saying is that we have to know how to balance the rough moments with our day-to-day -day activities. Yes. Because it's not my fault that you're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. And your bad day can cause the company a loss. Great. So it's very important as well. And in our discussion, Nabino, we also mentioned that employees are also customers of businesses. Right. And right. I wanted to ensure that in our discussion today, we touch yes. on the fact that employees are also customers and our managers right. also help we relate to our internal customers right, right, is also right. important in making That's and breaking our businesses, true. in ensuring the longevity of our businesses. So we're not saying that managers should be walking up around the place grinning at all customers, no, at all employees, no, no, but no, no, it's all. important that our demeanor, our accessory, which is our smile and how we interact with our, our employees, internal customers, is also a very pleasant one. That's true. And um, Lisa, I, re I remember how I commended you on um, how you handled your staff, and I was telling that to you. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I believe that I can say it. Um, I mean, when I see good, excellent customer service, internal, external, whatever it may be, I always feel good on the inside to know that, okay, there is someone who appreciates good customer service or knows how to execute a customer, customer service. And, you know, even how you, how you interact with your staff as an employer is very important. They are, they, I mean, it might go a little much more bigger than what we're talking about mm -hmm. because it has to do with internal relation and all of that. A lot of different factors. Right, mm -hmm. yes. But um, we have to also take into consideration that the staff purchase from us as well. And we have to make sure that even if they are they're, they're employees, they have to be treated well when they come to purchase. That's just, just the, the long shot of it is that we have to practice efficient customer service. It doesn't matter who it is, whether it's staff, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's staff, it's management, whatever the case may be, customer service has to be efficient at all levels. That's great. That's great. Now, we move to a very important question. Oftentimes, uh, in, in all places of employment we hear, the customer is always right. Is that true? Um, <laughs> that's a very ticklish um topic and the reason for that is because i know some persons are fitting and they're like oh yes customer is always right oh my god um that customer was so rude and all mm -hmm. of that but my motto is israel that the customer may not be always right but you always are right so that that's my motto. So even the customer is not always right because of your stance and how you behave and how you how you act it should always be right that it doesn't even matter who's right and who's wrong so one of the things that you have to do is always stay calm. You have to always listen to the customer. And you have to, you, you kind of internalize 
um, the dispute between a customer and yourself. And that's one thing that we do. We internalize it, we personalize it, mm-hmm. we make it sound like as if the customer is against us, and we have a personal you know, issue with that customer, and we can, we can even meet the customer tomorrow and bring them because we have internalized it. So that's what we have to, we have to separate our personal conflicts with, with the customer. And that's, and that's what it is. Separating it and knowing that we are here to do a job. We are here to make the customer happy, to make the customer comfortable, and at all costs, we will do that. So, I like the point that you made. The customer may not always be right, but yeah. we must always, always act right. Yes. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Because we, we all have experienced examples where customers come in, they curse, they oh, oh, treat employees so. very in a horrible manner. <laughs> but what do we yeah. do? Do we behave like them? No. no, we don't behave like them. I think we must take the higher road. So we, we're encouraging all our employees, all our employers, to be able to understand that though it's mentioned that the customer is always right, even in situations where the customer isn't always right, we always act right. Yes, and one of the things I want to say to Israel is that um, a lot of times um, when disputes arise between, between a customer and, and an employee, um, we don't know how to handle that dispute. Mm-hmm. And the, the first thing that we might do, we might just shut down and say, okay, okay, it's all right. Mm-hmm. It's not okay, it's not all right. That's not how you handle the dispute. Mm-hmm. You handle the dispute as a professional person. You listen to the customer. You don't just talk. You, you stay quiet and you listen to what the customer has to say. That's mm-hmm. one. Two, you try to solve the dispute. And if you cannot solve the dispute, you can go to a higher your supervisor or superior, whoever that can able to assist you in handling that dispute. But you don't just tell the customer, you don't just say, okay, you figure out, well, okay, yes, customer, the customer right, but you think in your mind that you don't want to make a fuss about it or you don't want to, make, you don't want to lose your job. So you just, you just calm the customer down by saying, okay, 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 and, I'm, and that's yeah. it. No, that's not the way. You handle the dispute and that is very, very important because it makes, it, it's going to make or break whether the customer is going to come back. Or even exactly. rec- or recommend somebody else to come mm-hmm. into your business. Because one of the things that I want to share with you all is that word of mouth is one of the best advertisement. And mm-hmm. you can advertise from now till kingdom come. But as uh, if uh, if twenty people go around spreading that this place doesn't have good customer service, the staff is not appropriate. They are very rude. People are gonna they're not gonna who wants to pay their money to 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 have a rude staff. Or who wants to pay their money to come and interface with someone who doesn't have any courtesy or don't even know how to treat you as a person or handle mm-hmm. you? So at the end of the day, you know, word of mouth is very important. So you can't let that customer leave and the dispute is not solved. So make sure that the dispute is solved. That is very, very important. That is key. And also importantly, like you mentioned, it's not just about shutting up the customer no. by saying, okay, 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 yeah, and, yeah. and just to calm the situation. Right. But really trying to create value for right. that customer. Right. Um, oftentimes we're not paid for, or we're not paid for going above and beyond. But it makes a world of a difference when we do go above and beyond to ensure that our customers are satisfied, even if they may be wrong, even if they may have caused uh, or started uh, a challenge in the workplace. But we must treat them all with value. Yes. Well, I, I want to just add later that, um, as you just said, you said we might not be paid. But I also want to say that your customer service, um, how you how you portray yourself and how you ex- how you exclude elude your customer service, if you might think that you're not getting paid, but people are seeing you and people are watching yeah. you, mm-hmm. and you're you're opening doors for yourself. Because That's I remember, true. I remember mm-hmm. that I had a I had a a, a, a employee mm-hmm. who was with me for quite some time, and I remember training her in customer service, and she was very efficient in customer service. I remember when she left me and she went to a new establishment to work, someone from the establishment came to me and asked me, what did I do? Okay. Because they were so impressed mm-hmm. with how this young lady um, had great customer skills and all of that. And she said she worked with me for four years. And I remember when she just came, she was not, she, she knew nothing about customer service. She, she never worked in that field. She never worked in where she was actually dealing with customer one on one. Okay. And I remember the first couple of weeks was very hard for her. I remember mm-hmm. her crying, you know, because when I was training her and, you know, she was, it was so hard for her to digest. But when she got the gift of it and she worked with me and I, and I, and I trained her, she was just so efficient in her, in her, in her service mm-hmm. that she was an asset to okay. a next company. That's so true. you are building yourself up an asset to wherever you go in the future. So we are creating exponential value for ourselves, not just looking at 
that we're working at the moment right. and maybe trying to use this as an opportunity to make the employer look bad exactly. you know because exactly. sometimes you know it happens some employees try to make the employer look bad by behaving in ways that's not professional right. but we create a future for ourselves right we are not just limited to where we are at the moment we could be our future could be brighter much brighter based on how we operate at the moment. And this could also be seen from basic examples of how we treat the customer right. who enters the workplace. Right. But these are also two, um, as you were saying that, um, <clears throat> we, have to also, we have to also remember to that, if, if, a cost, if the customer is, yes, sorry. <laughs> if the employee is, um, if the employee tries to make the, cost, the employer looks bad, mm -hmm. They are sabotaging themselves. Yes. Because at the end of the day, that's your daily bread, mm -hmm. and that's the person who, who pays your salary at the end of the day. So you, why would you want to sabotage your own self? You know, you understand what I'm saying. So I'm just saying that sometimes we have to think beyond. You know, I mean, some it can be some employers can be difficult to work with. Yes. Um, I can understand. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them, they are, they, they might be very strict. They might want to mm -hmm. think a particular way, and we have to learn our bosses. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to learn our employer. We have to know what is expected of us as an as, as the employee mm -hmm. and do what is expected of us. Yes, definitely. You know, so I think that that is one of the things that we have to you know always remember. Great. So I just want to recap in terms of, of how we handle the disputes, right? Um, in situations that may not be pleasing to us, we have to ensure that we listen. That's right. very important. It's not about speaking to the customer, speaking even at the customer. We also have to ensure that we solve the dispute as best as we can but if we need assistance yes. we go for assistance right. so that we can get to solve it in the best way as possible right and also don't make promises that we can't keep that is very important okay because they're going to hold us to a wood yes <laughs> you know it's often said that we should undersell and over deliver right it's right. important so we don't oversell and under deliver but right. we undersell and over deliver right Great. So I know we we supposed to be rounding up soon enough, um, but we want to touch on tips for providing excellent customer service right. and how we can balance our professionalism with our personality. Well, we have we already talked about some of the tips um, through the mm -hmm. points that we made, but um, we we'll go for it. Um, you have to be very polite and positive. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give a few examples because person might not understand when I say be polite and be positive, right? Okay. Um, we can be negative in how we speak to a customer. For example, a customer may come because they want a particular product, but we, we, we right now we don't have that product on shelf. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you might say, the customer might say, well, um, I, I really need that product. Really. You as the employee, the negative thing to say, which is the wrong thing to do, would be like, well, right now we are all out. Um, I don't know when we're going to get it. Um, so you have to come back maybe next month or so and mm -hmm. see if it has. That's mm -hmm. the wrong thing to say. Mm -hmm. You tell the customer, um, I'm so sorry, but right now we are all out of this product. But can I have your name and number? So as soon as this product becomes available, I will call you and I will inform you so you can come and get the product. We're saying the, the same thing, but in two different ways. Right. <laughs> one is where exactly. we're, we're in, well, exactly. ensuring that we have a repeat customer, and one is telling the customer, well, I don't care, you come back whenever you want and get whatever you want. Exactly. And that's where, again, the second tip is, Clear communication, and that's where it mm -hmm. ties in with this one. Mm -hmm. But clear communication is, as we spoke about, um, persons calling on the phone, and I'm calling to uh, to find out if you all have a particular service that you all render, and I'm calling to find out about that service. Now, you on the other line, you don't know much about that service, and the wrong way to go about it is mm -hmm. just saying, "Hi." Um, I don't know much about that service, so let me put you onto someone who does. Um, hold on a while, please, because I, I think that person is very busy right now, but I will try to get a person for you. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. And while the person is holding on, you're trying to connect the person and say, oh my God, this phone, this phone doesn't work properly. I need, this phone is just, um, okay, can you just hold, please, because this phone is really irritating me right now. <laughs> yeah. That is not clear communication. Okay. Clear communication. <laughs> Most definitely. But we do it, please, right? We, we do it. We do it on every day. And um, it happens. The clear way to communicate is, hi, um, I, I can't help you right now with this matter, but I know someone who can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to transfer it to Mr. James. He's very efficient in that area. So can you please hold the line? 
and you transfer the person to Mr. James. Definitely. And that's what you do. The person doesn't have to know how long you're working there and that mm-hmm. you're not versed with, with whatever yes. service that mm-hmm. they're providing. The person doesn't know that the phone, the person doesn't need to know that the phone has a problem. There are certain, there are certain issues in the company that need to be private. Mm-hmm. And that is something that is for our next topic, please, mm-hmm. on customer yes. service. But for sure, people don't have to know what's happening within their company. For example, if you don't have staples, if you don't have, you don't have to let the customer know. Right now, we all have those staples, so I really can't staple and document for you. That's mm-hmm. a private matter within the company that you need to keep between you and your other employees. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we bring all personal all matters issues, and all, all issues in the open. Out in the open. Mm-hmm. So that is one thing that we have to okay. be careful about. Also, Lisa, we have to be very knowledgeable about our product and our services. That's very true. And as I said before, sometimes customers come in and they don't, they don't even know what they want. And they just know that they want a blender or they want a, they want an oven, they, but they don't really know what, because that's not their feel. And that's not, you know, they that's just true. know that they want mm-hmm. that, that product. So you as a representative should know that product so well that you can sell that product to the individual without having to hesitate and they don't have to be second guessing if they should or should not. So again, customers to, to tie in with um good marketing skills, you know, in terms of and good sales sales. That's true. Good sales mm-hmm. skills. So again, that is very important. We should be very knowledgeable about the product and services. And it makes a difference when we do know what we're speaking about. And even that if we may not know everything, we will never know everything no. at the beginning. No. But no. we should always try to ensure that we improve on on what we know to make our businesses better right and that, make our service excellent that is true and also Lisa, um helping customers with breakneck speed and mm-hmm. that is sometimes we have customers so quick that the customer feel rushed okay and that's one of the things that we have to avoid mm-hmm. for efficient customer service we cannot uh, we cannot have a customer feel that they're being rushed the customer has to get our undivided attention at all mm-hmm. and you know let the customer know that um, i'm with you i'm working with you Sometimes that happens when you work on commission. And I mm-hmm. understand that if you work on a commission, you want to get as much sales as possible. Mm-hmm. But also you have to, again, that comes with budgeting your time. You have to know if you're in a fast-paced environment mm-hmm. and you know that you have 30 minutes for a customer or 20 minutes for a customer, you work within that time, but you make the customer feel comfortable with that time. But you, yeah. you don't rush the customer so much so that the customer did not even get what they really were looking for or they could not even understand what you were saying because mm-hmm. they would feel they felt that they would be in a rush. I have gone to business places before where I had to wait for a very long time because um, the customer rep, they're helping me and they're helping two other persons. And sometimes they forget that I'm even there. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, okay, what do I do? Do okay. I go or do I mm-hmm. stay? And, you know, or should I go somewhere else? So that is something that we have to take into consideration in terms of customer service. And even as we mentioned, that sometimes it seems rushed, but communicating exactly what's going on, not necessarily internal challenges, right. but communicating for customers that um, something else is coming up and I would have to attend to it very right. soon, but right. letting them know that I'm there or I will return or I could pass it over to someone else or just communicating with the, the customer right. to ensure that they understand what's really happening. It makes a difference, right. even if we cannot be there with them. So you understand is how clear communication and positive communication comes hand in hand. It ties Definitely. in hand in hand. Definitely. And also, lastly, one of the points that I want to touch on for effective communication is knowing how to close the conversation. Okay. And that's very important. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we can close the conversation so abrupt that the customer leaves unsatisfied. Um, when the customer, when we're done with the customer, one of the things that we should say is, is there anything else I can help you with? Okay. So that's one thing that we can ask a customer. Or are you satisfied with your purchase? Or are you, are you comfortable with what you're getting? Do you mm-hmm. want something else? You know, we, we, we don't just end the conversation without know, the customer really, really, you know, before we even know that the customer is satisfied or the customer is fully happy with their business. So what purchase. you just mentioned can make the world of a difference in business because if what we are providing for customers is not really suiting them and meeting their needs, right. and they mention, you know, I do not like this type of blender. I really would prefer if you had this other type. Right. And we engage for our customers and we realize that customers are gravitating towards another trend, then we could even change our line of products. Exactly. So in terms of how we relate to our customers, relate to our customers, it can ensure that we open up new opportunities for doing business right. or we even find new well right. new business ideas, new lines, new right. 
new ways of doing things and it really makes a world of difference. And one of the things that we should always be interested in is meeting the needs of our customers. Okay. Um, it's not just, it's just not getting stuff that is because it is cheaper for us as, a, as the employer or the company to purchase, mm -hmm. but meeting the needs of the customers. Making sure that what we have is what the customer needs. And that's one thing that I always ensure in our business, Mr. Rabat. You know, even in the boutique, in we, in our closet, because you mm -hmm. know that we have two of exclusive closets, yeah. um, mm -hmm. we ensure that a woman, the, 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 the trend that we carry, is something that is versatile, is something that a woman can use on her every day, and that's something that is so far-fetched that you only have one use out of it. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so that is something that we have to take into consideration. Which is one of the, the main aspects of business, like right. with men, well, that we experience and even business owners know this and right. persons who are thinking of going into business it's meeting and solving a need of the customers so right. if we're not solving a need then uh, we may have to pivot how we do business yes. pivot from where we are and yes. look at how we can tailor that to solve the need of our customers yes and that also comes into um, persons who are going into business i always say do something that you love mm -hmm. and give your of business or just going to a business because Jane has a business. Um, mm -hmm. That can be a downfall yes. too, to any, any, mm -hmm. any business person. And, you know, because I always say that whatever gift that you have on the inside of you, that is a way of making money. And that's going to open each other for you because it's going, it's going to come naturally. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to motivate you to do it. I'm not going to have to, you know, beat you for stick to it. You're going to do it. It's going to come naturally. Even when the challenges come and the trials come, you will be discouraged, you're a human being, mm -hmm. but at the end of it, you're still going to go and force forward because that's what you want. And the same thing with customer service, because if you're in a job where, again, personality is very important in customer service, because some people, they don't have an the network. Um, they have a very, they're very, they're very, um, they're always angry all the time. They have a very, um, sour face and all of those different things. So some mm -hmm. people just don't have a knack for customer service. And I believe that when we're employing people, we have to make sure and ensure that we get the right people for the job. Mm -hmm. We don't put um, square pegs in wrong holes, but we put the square pegs in the square holes. Because sometimes we hire people to do customer service. And I'm talking on an employer point of view right now. Sometimes mm -hmm. we, we hire persons to, do, to, to be our customer service rep. And the person has no customer service, and that's one of the things that we have to do as employers that we have to train staff in customer mm -hmm. service. That's something that is people they don't really put emphasis on. Mm -hmm. Training staff, proper training mm -hmm. in customer service management, making sure that our staff is very well in, in customer service. But that's something that we have to tell that's the foundation of our business. And if our business does not have good customer service, mm -hmm. um, People are not gonna they're not gonna carry it to a business and we have to make sure that that's true training is is one of the essential assets of our business you know so that is something that employers need to cooperate in their business have training at least every six months you have new staff coming in mm -hmm. you might not be able to have training every month but at least every six months you have training you have you know you you bring the new staff in and you train them in customer service that's important yeah there's a, a Something that came to mind as we were discussing, um, the importance of customer relationship management, CRM. I know big businesses uh, may be quite familiar with this because it's something that right. they, they must right. implement. But it's important that we have a plan as to how we manage and we continue yes. the relationship with our customers. Yes. Because if we don't have customers, then we do not have business. So we have to find a way how we can have repeat customers or new customers, but to manage the relationship with our customers. And this customer's intent will be our greatest promoters. Right. So sometimes we may spend a lot of money promoting and saying, this is my business and this is what I do. But right. if I do not meet the needs of my customers or treat them in a valuable way, then this, all the money that we spend on marketing and promotion may not be valuable to us. It will not be. That, that's most definitely. And I think that is, I think honestly, Lisa, that um, employers need to start putting budgets in place for customer service training. Um, that is something that I think that we love here in Dominica, mm -hmm. and it's something that I think that can be developed um, in the near future going forward. Definitely. Because um, customer service, as I keep saying, and I will keep, and I will keep saying it, is that is the key foundation to a business. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned about the you mentioned about the larger businesses. These businesses have already created a brand. Yes. And the smaller businesses are the ones who suffer. Because the smaller businesses, what happens is that um, we have a lot of competition in terms of what we do. 
We have a lot of businesses selling blender, a lot of other businesses selling clothes, a lot of other businesses are a restaurant. But what makes us stand out as that particular business is our customer service. Definitely. And I know we're really, we're really thankful to those who joined our Launch and Learn, the second episode of our Launch and Learn. And for those of you who just joined, we're discussing customer service, balancing professionalism with personality. And we had Nabina Judd speaking with us from Twitter's Exclusive about customer service, the importance of customer service, the importance of professionalism. Is the customer always right? And tips for handling or tips for good customer service. Just to reiterate the points, um, she mentioned that we should be polite and positive because if we're negative, then we're driving customers away from right. our business. She also mentioned that we should communicate clearly with our customers. If we don't communicate clearly, then we're not able to have repeat customers, but even to serve our customers and meet their needs truly. Um, it was also mentioned that we should know our business. We should know the products that we sell. Yes. We cannot be selling something and we really don't know about it. Then we'd be clueless and our customers would see clearly straight through that. And we should also, also as companies, businesses, ensure that we put a budget towards training. It may be taking some time, even if we may not have all the money, we may not have a lot of money and we know our businesses don't have a lot of money to put towards this, but being intentional to take measurable steps to ensure our employees are trained to deliver exceptional customer service can make a world of a difference for businesses. And we did mention to ensure that we put a plan for customer relationship management. Yes. Now, we don't have any final words that you'd want to, to say and to speak about to our viewers? Well, I know I know that um, after we after persons are here yesterday, um, they're going to really go back home and reevaluate um, their customer service. So I just want to tell, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, it's a process. Um, you can, you know, again, as I said, that it's a very thin line between your personality and customer mm -hmm. service. But just always remember that um, the customer comes first and you have to treat the customer that they are very important for your business space. So that is one thing that you have to remember. As I said, don't be so hard on yourself. I mean, I know sometimes it might be a very tough pill to swallow, especially persons that have been practicing bad customer service for so many years mm -hmm. and something that's not so common here in Dominica. But, um, you know, it takes simple steps, take baby steps um, as to how you can manage your customers better. You know, even by how you answer the phone, how you speak to them, how you say hi to them. You know, take small steps to that. And as time goes by, you'll be surprised as to how you're going to grow in customer service. Great. Well, I'm really delighted that we got to speak about customer <laughs> yes, service today. Yes, it's can. often said, even spoken on the radio, that we go to businesses in Dominica and we may not find good customer service. So we do not find good customer service. But I'm happy that we got to break the ice and speak a bit more about customer service and how we can improve this in Dominica. I would say this is the IC just touching the touching the eye. So just giving a little view as to how we can develop this, but more emphasis will be placed in ensuring that we can develop the customer service in our business places. We thank you for tuning in to our Launch and Learn, where we got to share with you on key aspects of customer service. And our DIC Launch and Learn platform is an opportunity for employees to understand how we can develop ourselves and spend a little time, once every two months, or if we do it more frequently, but a little time to develop our expertise, to be able to speak about something with our employees on a different level and improve our place of employment and Dominica as a whole. I also want to thank, thank Tim Michelle for supporting our Lunch and Learn by being our technician behind the scenes and we're really grateful for her support today. So thank you everyone for being there and we look forward to seeing you at our next Lunch and Learn. Yeah. Nabina, thank you very much for being it here today. It was indeed a privilege. I, I enjoyed the, 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 the whole discussion. Great. <laughs> Great. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.